Hello guys. Welcome to my channel. So, say what happens in a dyslexia slash dyspraxia test seems to have uh, been of like you know something of interest to people, and I'd like to clarify that my test is specifically for dyslexia because that is what I had always been told that I had. It's always been like, oh, you're clearly dyslexic. Um, so I uh, like full on dyspraxia test. I think I'm pretty certain would be different to the test that I had but um yes I thought I would say about I would say I would talk about um my dyslexia and how it affects me anyway sorry so uh as I said I have thought that I was dyslexic for many years and if you'd like like a full-on timeline about it I can do that but that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Um, yeah, so I just always thought I had dyslexia, mainly because of things that I do and the things that most dyslexic people do. And, you know, if you were to tick all these boxes on a questionnaire online, they'd be like, woohoo, you're dyslexic. Obviously, because, you know, that's not real. But, yeah, things that I do. Um, if you are in, if you want to see this video, you know, like, subscribe continue watching. Yeah, that's all I can say about that really, isn't it? Uh, so, my dyslexia traits. So, a common dyslexia trait is not being able to tell your lefts and rights. This is a major issue for me and my sister actually was advised in her driving test to put an L and an R on her hand so that when the driving instructor um, said left and right she could literally just look at the L and R because I have to do the L which is backwards to you guys, I assume. But if you hold up your hand like this, the hand that is your left hand makes an L the right way. And your right hand would make a backward L. So that's a good way to know. Um, yes, that's a dyslexia trait. Also getting numbers the wrong way around. So I catch, or I used to catch, the number 12 bus home. And once I got off my one bus and then seen the bus in the slot next to mine, I was like, that's a bit weird, why is it in the slot over, don't care, it's about to leave, let's just run on the bus. And then I realised it's not the number 12, it's the number 21, which actually departs from the one over. Oh well, luckily I realised pretty soon that I was on the wrong one and got off. Um, yes, so that's a dyslexia trait, getting numbers the wrong way around and saying the wrong number. If you're dyslexic, please comment if you're the same. I don't know why. Like, I can understand people say, like, um, Q's and P's, um, quite confusing because they're, they're similar, they're just the opposite. But I always get sevens and fours. That's always the number I mix up. If there's a four in, like, a list of numbers, I have to stop and think which number it is because I tend to say seven. I don't understand why. So, yes, I tend to mix up numbers. Um reading and writing. Obviously this is a this is like the major ones, which is why I haven't really said them. So dyslexic people um find it difficult normally reading, writing and retaining information apparently, which is something that I was unaware of. Like when you're actually reading the information, you don't take in the information even though you read the words, which makes sense, which is why I can finish a chapter of a book and then I'm like and so if someone was like, Oh what happened? I'd be like did happen in this book. So yes, I tend to read without actually processing it. Um, I, f I can't read many words. Still to this day there's words in a book that I cannot read and I try for ages and then I just skip them and read the sentence without it. Or sometimes you read on the rest of the sentence and it actually makes sense. You realise what words should have been there and you know, kind of get you kind of get it. Uh, writing. My writing is awful, literally like, I'm surprised anyone can read it. It's shocking. There's not much else I can say about that, it's just bad. <laughs> and, oh, another really annoying one is when someone is speaking, so like in a lecture, when a teacher is talking and you're trying to write down what they're saying, my brain doesn't process what they're saying at the same speed, like I can't process both at the same time, so I'm like halfway through the sentence of knowing what she's saying and then I'm like, 
I can't remember the last, last half of a sentence. So I've literally just had half a sentence, which normally the first half doesn't make sense for the second half. Yeah. Very annoying. Or, ah, so the, the other week in uni, we had to write about law and a common saying, which if you've watched any like a uh, law drama, procedural drama, I think they're called. I'm pretty sure that's wrong. Um, they'll say beyond reasonable doubt, which is, you know, uh, how you decide if someone is um, convicted of a crime um, is beyond reasonable doubt. But for some reason, I could, I said beyond and kept writing be hond with a freaking H. So I wrote B E H and then I was like, that's not beyond cross route B E H and then I was like no that's not beyond and cross route B E H and then I was like what is that letter and I couldn't figure out I literally had to go away and then on the weekend I was like beyond not hond and had to rewrite it and I was like I'm glad I remembered what that word was because like if it was a word that I if it was like a sentence that I hadn't heard many times I probably would have been like I don't know what was meant to put it there <laughs> very very annoying uh yeah if you have dyslexia you probably know um dyslexia quite commonly affects people with maths i am lucky enough in the fact that it doesn't affect my maths at all uh yes. uh things that people say about dyslexic that i like people assume about me because i'm dyslexic that I don't think is true is that um, I'm stupid or I don't try and I think that's really really rude to say to be honest I've tried really hard at all the exams that I currently have passed and all of my teachers if you ask them they'll say you've tried really hard you just you need to glue it together which is a saying that all teachers seem to say to me you just need to glue everything together it's not that I need to glue it together I need a new brain that's what I need. That would that would help a lot. Thanks if you could give me one of those. I don't get it. So I'm stuck with it. Um, yes, so that's really annoying. Um, and yeah, in primary school people always said to me like, oh she just doesn't try hard enough, she just doesn't concentrate. And it's like, no. I'm not paying any attention to you because I, I like I don't know what to do and I've asked you for help and you're not helping. There's like being dyslexic, there's nothing worse than when you go to a teacher for help and they literally just like, I can't help you, sorry. Or, or they'll just repeat it in the exact same way and it's like, oh thanks mate, oh, that made so much more help. Uh, no, so I've come for help. If I wanted it to be said in the same way, I'd literally just read it again to myself. But yes, this isn't meant to be just a bitch at teachers. Um, other things. Oh, trying to read in front of people so <laughs> James's mom is an odd bod I've got to give it to her hilarious she has these weird sentences that she thinks are the funniest things in the world and they make no sense to anyone but herself but the problem is she used to make James read them as a child and then when I came into the life she was like this will be hilarious read these sentences out she didn't know I was dyslexic obviously <laughs> And she's like, read out these sentences of words you've never seen before, of names you've never seen before. Read them for me, please. And I was literally like, I don't want to do this. But also, how do you tell your boyfriend's mom, I'm not going to read these because that's what I do in school. I just point blank refuse to read it. Um, if I hadn't had time to prepare myself beforehand. Um, and then like James I'd say like I don't know this word and James would literally say the words sound it out um no thanks mate I cannot sound it out if I could sound it out I would have just sounded it out ah frustrating isn't it and I think that's another like that's the thing that teachers don't understand that how frustrating it is because they can't see like it's it's like the photo that come up on my 
Facebook the other day, there's like a person in a wheelchair and then there's like a person with crutches and then underneath there's a person that says, uh, it's just like a normal photo of a person on a toilet sign <clears throat> and it says, not all disabilities are visible, which is completely true in this sense because to the normal eye, you and like, you know, it just looks like a normal person, but it's actually really hard and I don't know what to do and I've come to you for help. Which is really annoying. So yes, I can understand where someone who is not dyslexic, who or who does not know anyone who is dyslexic, doesn't understand how to help. But I also think that there needs to be better help in schools. Um, I think especially in primary school. Like, I think if it was dealt with properly in primary school, it would have been a lot easier in secondary school. And taking me out of class just to give me a reading lesson just made me feel stupid and didn't help at all so yes that's my video of traits that I have that um you know my dyslexia traits um that's it ending it goodbye don't forget to like subscribe below the video